neck mass initially treated with antibiotics with no change. Two most likely diagnoses based on the space in which this lives, lymphoma and neuroblastoma, neuroblastoma and neurofibroma, lymphoma and neurofibroma, or fibromatosis coli and paraganglioma. Give you a hint that paraganglioma is almost not in the differential diagnosis in the pediatric age group, although it always is in the differential diagnosis in the adult. <laughs> B and C, neuroblastoma or neurofibroma because of the location posterior to the carotid sheath vessels, which is false regarding neuroblastoma. It's the most common malignancy in children under one. Cervical primaries are more common than cervical metastatic disease. Cervical primaries present with feeding difficulties, palpable mass, or even airway symptoms. Or most cervical neuroblastoma disease is metastatic which is false. Maybe that was a little confusing the way I worded it. Cervical primary is much less common than cervical metastatic disease. Of these cervical primaries, which are very uncommon, are they which is false. Posterior to the carotid sheath, more homogeneous than rhabdo, intraspinal extension may occur, intracranial extension is common. Very good intracranial extension is uncommon. Rhabdo is the one that, at the skull base that likes to have intracranial extension. Most neuroblastomas occur in the retroperitoneum, so most neuroradiologists don't even think about them much. But occasionally they occur in uh, the neck as a cervical primary, and when they do, they're posterior to the carotid sheath vessels. Majority of cervical disease is metastatic. We see a lot of cervical disease in patients um, with neuroblastoma on uh, particularly MIBG uh, nuclear medicine imaging. Two other patients with primary cervical neuroblastoma, both in the same place, solid, homogeneous masses posterior to the carotid sheath vessels in all three of these cases without intraspinal extension. Two other cases of neural type lesions that might occur, neurofibromas, same, similar space posterior to the carotid sheath vessels. However, the patient on the left also has those serpiginous posterior neck neurofibromas. And the patient on the right with diffusely enhancing infiltrative multispatial lesion of plexiform neurofibroma, both patients with NF1. There's my arrow. Lymphoma in the kids looks just like it does in the adults. Multiple matted nodes, unilateral, bilateral, usually don't calcify before treatment. Hot on gallium scan, as we see in this patient. And what most people are going towards is positive on PET, both supraclavicular and in the mediastinum. Many times it's big bulky adenopathy, and you're going to raise that question based on the um, history. Um, here you might wonder. Other things, granulomatous disease, mono maybe if the tonsils and adenoids were big. This is a little atypical. Three different patients with lymphoma, big, huge, large, matted nodes, actually was dislocating his jaw. And this was a patient with Burkitt's lymphoma with renal and um, sinonasal disease as well. Case number four is a four-year-old, new onset, rapidly increasing mass, no fever, select the most likely diagnosis. Is this a branchial cleft cyst, a lymphatic malformation, neuroblastoma, or rhabdomyosarcoma?
And the answer is rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma, good, 76%. Which of the following is false regarding rhabdomyosarcoma? sarcoma? Most common childhood soft tissue sarcoma, 90% occur in the head and neck. Intracranial extension is common in perimenageal lesions. Very good. 90% do not occur in the head and neck. Only 40% occur in the head and neck. So the minority are in the head and neck. Most are outside of the head and neck. Of the lesions in the head and neck, they're divided by the hemonc folks into orbital, perimeningeal, and all other sites. And depending on the site of origin, that puts them into a different protocol for treatment. The thing for us to remember is that more than half of patients with perimeningeal disease, which includes middle ear, paranasal sinus, nasal cavity, nasopharynx, and these other sites, more than half of them will have intracranial extension. So frequently, CT and MRI are complementary in these patients, CT to look for the bone destruction, and MRI to look for the intracranial extension. Again, we like to see heterogeneous enhancement and bone erosion to favor the diagnosis of rhabdomyosarcoma, certainly a fairly homogeneous mask enlarging the foraminal valley extending into middle cranial fossa and cavernous sinus with mild contrast enhancement. It's going to certainly make us wonder about rhabdomyosarcoma. But beware of the lesions that do not enhance very much and do not cause bone destruction. These are two different patients with soft nasal ala masses, mild enhancement, infantile hemangiomas enhance almost as much as vessels, if not as much as vessels. They're in younger patients. This wouldn't fit an infantile hemangioma in either of these kids. This one had a little bit of bony scalloping, but not a lot of bony erosion, and both of these are rhabdomyosarcomas. So you don't have to have the bone erosion. Case number five, three-week-old with a neck mass and torticollis. Most likely done.